Hello and welcome back to my shop. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at making a new crosscut sled for my table saw. I made this one a couple of years ago and it very quickly became my most useful and my favorite jig to use in the shop. If you've never used a crosscut sled in your workshop, let me tell you, you're really missing out. This is kind of like a poor man's version of a sliding table saw. Now, its primary function is, of course, to make crosscuts. It makes perfect square crosscuts. However, you can use this for making miters and tapers simply by attaching blocks to either the sled or the fence. And the best part is those are repeatable cuts. Now, I'm going to make a new sled today that has a few more features than this one. Uh, it's going to make it a little faster and easier for me to set things up. However, it's going to add a little expense. We're going to add things like T-tracks and stop blocks. If you don't need all that, you can use all the stuff we're going to talk about today and build a simple sled like this, and believe me, you're going to love it. So now let's take a closer look at some of the differences between this sled and the one that I'll be building today. The first upgrade I'm going to be making is these aluminum runners. On the first sled, I used wood runners, which works okay, but they are susceptible to seasonal expansion contraction due to temperature and humidity changes. I'm hoping to avoid that by using these aluminum runners. These runners also have this little set screw that threads through and pokes out the other side. So these can be adjusted to make a perfect fit. And if there's any seasonal expansion and contraction, they can be readjusted to maintain that perfect fit. Other upgrades I'll be doing, I'm going to be adding a T-track to the top of my fence. That's going to allow me to use this stop block that swivels out of the way. I think I'm going to like this a lot more than previously I was just clamping blocks to this fence. Then I have some T-tracks that I'll be applying in a couple different areas that are going to allow me to use these hold-down clamps. You can use those to hold down small pieces. Also, I can attach jigs to the sled for those miter and taper cuts. Well, let's get into the build. Starting with a couple of maple 1x4s, I'm going to glue two pieces together, and to keep them as straight as possible, I'm going to clamp an old 4-foot level right to it. And then I'll run it through the joiner to try to get one perfectly flat surface. With that edge against the fence of the joiner, I'll square up one edge, and then I'll use the planer to get it to its final dimensions. And then I cut it to exactly four feet. That'll be the width of my crosscut sled. Then using a three-quarter inch dado blade on my table saw, I'll cut the recess for the T-track. Then just pre-drill and screw in the T-track. And a quarter inch round over will make it a little more comfortable to hold on to. I'm using a piece of three quarter inch maple plywood for this only because I had an extra piece laying around and I rip it just wide enough. I want to be able to cut a full 24 inch piece on my crosscut sled. I cut the aluminum runners with my chop saw. You can use a regular carbide blade for cutting aluminum, just go very slow. Bear in mind that this video sped way up. You need to go at a real slow pace when making these cuts. My Triton router comes with this fence. I'll just set it up with a three quarter inch router bit, set it to the depth of my T-track, and I'll use this for cutting the dados in my crosscut sled. This Triton router actually has a port so you can attach a vacuum. I've just never got around to buying the attachment. Instead I just make a mess all over my shop. I'll set some pennies in the tracks to hold the aluminum rails just above the surface. And then I'm going to set my rip fence to wherever you want to have your cut in the crosscut sled. Some people like theirs centered. I like mine to be offset a bit so that I can clamp a full 24 inch piece on the left hand side of my crosscut sled. And then I'll just make a couple of pencil marks where the runners are. And then using way too much CA glue, I'll glue my runners to my crosscut sled. This is way too much. Sometimes less is more, and this was a big mess to clean up. Then permanently attach the runners with some screws. Then I need to clean off all this excess CA glue that's squeezed out on the sides. Anything left on there is going to hinder how smoothly this crosscut sled moves. Then I'll just attach a piece of 1x4 maple to the far end of the crosscut sled. This will be the side that's away from me as I'm using the sled. 
rather than back over the table saw, we're going to make a cut through the plywood and stopping just short of the near side. Then I'll attach the fence to the near side. I'm only going to do a couple of screws from underneath, and I'm going to use a framing square for now to get as absolutely close as possible, and then we'll show you how to dial it in in just a minute. And then I'll make the cut all the way through, but you want to be careful to keep your hands out of the way as we don't have the guard in place just yet. Now I want a little guard to keep my fingers out of the saw blade, so I'm going to take some 1x4s, roughly 3.5 by 3.5, nail them together with some glue and some brad nails, and then just attach with some pocket screws to the fence. To check the fence for square and get it dialed in, I'm going to use the 5 cut method. Any scrap piece of plywood will do. This came from some packaging and isn't even close to square, but that's okay. For a visual, I'll write 1 through 5 on the plywood. As you turn the plywood and cut, any amount that it is out of square will compound on the next cut. I'll use a caliper to measure the final cutoff to determine how much adjustment is needed and which direction to move the fence. That last cut had a discrepancy of 84 thousandths. Now I'm sure there's some mathematician out there that could tell you exactly how far to move the fence, but I'm just starting with moving the fence half of that 84 thousandths, using a feeler gauge and a clamp and a block, just adjust the fence and try again. This time my last cut had a discrepancy of 13 thousandths, which is a little more respectable, but I still want to get a little closer. So I'll move the fence half of that 13 thousandths again, but this time it needs to go in the other direction. I'll make the five cuts one last time. Now this time my final cut has a discrepancy of only 6 thousandths, which after all those compounding cuts is well within reason. The T-Track I ordered came in 24 inch pieces, and with my sled being offset, I had to cut the tracks a little. With the tracks being recessed into the plywood, there really isn't much left for a screw to grab, so I'll use two-part epoxy to glue them in place. Applying a little tape over the screw holes ahead of time prevents the epoxy from oozing into the T-Track. I think I'm going to like this new setup. I have a stop lock now that I can just adjust and swing out of the way when I don't need it. I have a couple of hold-down clamps to hold my pieces in place. And I can also use those hold down clamps to hold down a jig if I want to make some sort of taper cuts and I want to make repeatable cuts. Well that's all I have for you today. I think I'll really enjoy the upgrades that I made to my cross cut sled. If you're looking to build your own cross cut sled, I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you are looking to pick up any of these items that I used on my cross cut sled today, feel free to use the links in the description below. Those are affiliate links, which means you get the same price you would pay otherwise, but I make a small commission off of that, and it really helps support my channel. If you enjoyed this video at all, I would really hope that you please like and subscribe. And as I always say, even if you didn't, please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.